Hey there, Margie Bryce here bringing you the Krabby Pastor podcast. And I don't think you're going to be too surprised to know that it's too easy today to become the Krabby Pastor. Our time together will give you food for thought to help you be the ministry leader fully surrendered to God's purposes and living into whatever it takes to get you there and keep you there. So we're talking about sustainability in ministry. I need to talk to you about something fairly serious, and that is fun. I recall my son was in elementary school when this first happened and I was out back I was out by the you know the playground stuff and yeah I had pretty cool stuff there really not like the kind of stuff I had you know I had padded the uh, ground I think I played on asphalt or something I don't know so there you go now I'm dating myself but anyway I turned around back to the school and I looked and there was this huge sign and then an area with some benches and it said, no fun zone on it. And I thought, what? What is that? Oh my goodness. And I asked my son, but I did it in kind of a calculated way, (laughs) you know, when you're trying to get stuff out of your kid and he was you know child number three so I'd already been around the block a couple times but instead of saying you know the yes or no question have you ever sat in the no fun zone I said this to him I said how many times have you been in the no fun zone and he he did blurt yeah oh like two or three you know some it wasn't a big number or anything and I said really what you know? I what do you have to do to get sent to the no fun zone? And we had a great conversation about the no fun zone and what happens and how it is that you end up in the no fun zone. So I guess my question to you today is: How many times have you been in the no fun zone? That really is not like you got in trouble is in my youngest son's case, and there you go. Now you're sitting in the no fun zone. But I want to ask you, how many times are you in the no fun zone? And are you in the no fun zone, like, perpetually? This this is a matter of self-care. It really is. Because if you're in the no fun zone perpetually, and you never leave it, or you never see the reason to leave the no fun zone to go hang in the fun zone, well, you know, we need to talk. So I had a psych eval, so now I can say like, Sheldon, instead of my mother had me tested, I'm not crazy. My mother had me tested. I could say, well, I'm not crazy. My denomination had me tested. You know, there's probably a good reason for that. They do it for everybody, just so you know that I wasn't being singled out to the best of my knowledge. So, and the psych about came back, you know, fine. You know, I was fine as they ever are, I guess. I I don't know what to say about that, but it did note, and this is my interpretation of what it said, that I have the tendency to stand in the no fun zone that I need to intentionally seek out some fun because my my MO in life is that I will find goals or things that I need to do or I have to take care of this, take care of that, take care of this, take care of that, do this, do that. You know, my to-do list is longer than it should be. And you know, in ministry, the work is never done. I mean, and there are other professions that are like that, frankly unless you want to go work in a job intentionally where at the end of the day, boom, that's it. And you don't have to worry about anything until you show up the next day or next time. So the the psyche valve said that I need to intentionally find the fun zone. 
and and I work on that. I work on that. But I did notice I was out. It was a local chamber of commerce, and there was a group of women that I'm a part of, and we were going on the scavenger hunt, which really I think was for families, not for, you know, middle-aged-ish women in a group. But we went anyway. You know, we went in the one store where you got a free little temporary tattoo and you got to play a ring toss. So that's when kind of I thought, hmm, I think this is for kids and families, but okay. Well, we we got in this one spot and you got these way big oversized silly sunglasses, you know? <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I stuck it in my not my pocket. It was it was like more like a big over a purse thing that I had. And I thought, mom, but until someone in the group, there's always someone in the group that says this kind of thing. Everybody, put your sunglasses on. We're gonna take a picture. And of course, you know she's gonna post it on social media. I'll tell you, don't bother looking for it. <laughs> it's, I make sure this kind of thing is just not on my. Facebook page or or anywhere else for that matter. But anyhow, I guess that means in that moment, I was in the no fun zone, I suppose. But anyhow, that's just, you know, let's, some of us are just like this. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But I do know that there are times and places where I do need to, you know, just get with the program for five minutes and do the fun thing do the silly thing and it doesn't have to be silly either that's just my example of the moment and to show you that you know that I I'm working on this too you know like this week I think I'm going with uh, a cousin to a lavender festival with all these people that are you know the booths and there'll be food it will be fun and I said I said to my husband hey I'm going with my cousin on Friday afternoon and we're just going to have some fun. And it, and it dawned on me, you know, when, when was the last time I did something where it was just fun? It served no um, purpose in the grand scheme of anything. You're just going to go and you're just going to do it and enjoy the time away. But it does make you wonder, and I don't know if you ever wonder this, why? Why is it that some of us avoid the fun zone or some of us um, hang too long in the no fun zone? What are some reasons for that? And and I, I thought about a couple anyway, but some of this is the idea that fun is pretty much mostly in my opinion, <laughs> useless, <laughs> which says that I go at a lot of life in in a utilitarian mindset. You know, everything has to have a purpose. Everything has to have a reason. Um, and in reality, unpurposed things, you know, like fun, have a purpose. They actually do have a purpose. And usually that purpose is pretty unseen. It's pretty deep down inside that every now and then we just need to check out for a minute. I don't know, maybe this dovetails into a Sabbath mindset. I mean, I do tend to keep a Sabbath on the Sabbath, but I know many that listen to this podcast are in ministry and therefore... Uh, you, you're not keeping it on the Sabbath per se, but you are um, hopefully carving out some Sabbath time. But seeing fun as useless is kind of less than helpful. It's a less than helpful mindset. And I tend to go at things very purposefully. I tend to have goals I tend to have ideas in my head. I want to do this, this, and this. You know, I will say at the beginning of a weekend, which 
many in ministry don't necessarily experience. You know, if you take Mondays off, you don't necessarily have two days in a row. Maybe if you have Fridays where you designate that, that's a, you know, you might have two days then. But at the beginning of any kind of weekend, I will say to my husband, so what did you have in mind for this weekend? You know, and usually I'm thinking of what he wants to accomplish around the house. And we've had a renovation project here. And so there have been things that we needed to take care of and to do. And, you know, I don't necessarily always carve out that moment for fun. And so there's that confession for you. (laughs) So it's fun for you. This is kind of a, a reason, but, you know, a rationale or a mindset, you know, where you can think that having fun really is no fun, that you struggle to have fun, even in fun situations. Now, I'll admit that I I don't like the silly glasses. I don't, you know, I especially don't like when they put it on Facebook, but I will go along with it. And I will go out in an afternoon when or an evening when this group of women are doing this, that, and the other. I actually have shown up This is a good confession. I have shown up at book club not having read the book. That's not necessarily fun because (laughs) not in the same way as wearing the silly glasses is, but I have actually done things that are unlike me and put that kind of in some sort of a self-care category of, you know, I am always the good student. I always want to be prepared. I always want to have done the assignment. I oh, And I thought, oh, for heaven's sakes, I have been to these book club meetings and there are people there that don't even necessarily discuss the book in the way that I would have discussed it, which really talks a lot about plot and what was the author's intent and all that. And I thought, I just need to rein myself in. This is not helpful for anyone that um, I am cutting myself off from things like John 1010, have life and have it in abundance. So I thought, you know, this was a moment of fun in my little mindset anyway, actually showing up at book club and not having read the book. And, you know, I lived to talk about it. I didn't have to be on all the time to just enjoy other people's company. So that's when I said to myself, I haven't read the book, but I want to go and connect with other people and do something silly, do something just for the sake of doing it that has no rhyme, reason, purpose, or goal attached to it. So I actually did show up and I did have a good time at the book club where I had not read the book. So where do I want to go with this? I want to have a challenge. I want you to schedule some fun. As I said, I'm going to the Lavender Festival this weekend. I probably need to go and smell the lavender and just chill. And I guess I want to ask you what kind of fun could you schedule into your life? just to chill and do something that doesn't have a purpose, do something just to enjoy other people's company, do something to just enjoy the life that God has given to us. And I don't often do that. I have the mindset, this is where I go, I don't know about you, probably there are a few that are as deficient in this department as as I am, but Life goes along, life goes along, and good stuff happens, positive things happen, fun stuff happens. But I tend to focus on the negative, the bad things that happen, the things I now have to address, the to-do list, the on and on and on, and I miss, I miss sometimes the good and the fun things going on around me and and minimize it. And I, I think that's I don't think that's good. I don't think that's healthy. Um, that's probably why something like this is on the psych <laughs> like it is. 
I want to ask you, when was the last time that you uh, made water balloons? When was the last time that you did something just unusual for your character and, and just to have fun? When was the last time that you intentionally scheduled something to go and do just to be and just to be with other people and to just enjoy their company? Because at the end of the day, I think that's what we're talking about here is joy. You know, what are you doing to intentionally knit some joy into your heart and into your life? I know the book of Philippians uh, talks a lot about joy and it it offers us some great uh, insight into the fact that as Christians, we are to have joy in our hearts and in our lives and we need to be cultivating it. And those of us who that's not our natural disposition, you know, we're a little more Eeyore-like in life, have to be very intentional about carving that into our existence. Otherwise, we'll spend our lives sitting in the no-fun zone. And I think the older you get, the older you get, the more you see the value and the need and You don't want to look back on your life and say, man, I spent my whole life looking like I had sucked lemons perpetually. What is up with that? Because that really is inconsistent with the people that we really want to be and the people that God has designed us to be, especially when you talk about having life and having it in abundance. So here is your challenge in the next week or so, and you can send me an email at Margie at Margie Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E, if you're not sure about that. I'm sure it's in the show notes somewhere. And email me, you know, what you did for fun. I'd love to hear from you. I am going to be thinking about you at the uh, Lavender Festival uh, this this week, and so and I may post a picture, a fun picture, of of myself at the um, at the Lavender Festival on the Facebook page, Self Care and Sustainability, the number four ministry leaders. Um, so I want you to take this serious, though. <laughs> take this silly assignment, it's very serious, and I want you to have some fun. And then thank God at the end of it and know that it was okay. You have my permission to not be on the clock all the time, but to just check out for a moment here and there so that you can enjoy what God has given you and the life that he has granted to you. The Krabby Pastor Podcast is brought to you by Bryce Coaching, and I connect with ministry leaders and help them when they are stuck, help them when they need to know what their next steps are, and just a journey with them, which is a type of self-care, actually. But this podcast is also brought to you by Bryce Glass Art. You can find that on Facebook. So when I am... uh, doing this podcast it is paid for and sponsored by the glass articles that I make and sell and the coaching that I do and it is my privilege to call you to radical self-care so that you can go the distance with God.